Hi and welcome to another video update from the Fire Brigade Union, held obviously via video conferencing due to rest the restrictions that are currently in place. We're joined by FBU National Officer Ricardo Latore and also of course General Secretary Matt Rack to discuss what is becoming a bitter row over safety arrangements for firefighters in the workplace. Now Ricardo, I'm going to come to you first because you've spent a great deal of time studying this issue in depth and arranging the risk assessments we're in, that are in place. Now, these are risk assessments that effectively have been scrapped now. They've been called um, onerous and unreasonable, overly detailed by the National Fire Chiefs Council and indeed the HMI now. So I suppose the first question is, are they? And if not, why? Asking for the health and safety of firefighters is never unreasonable, Tam. And I think it's important that we set straight here exactly what it is we're asking for and what it is the employers and the fire chiefs are saying is unreasonable. We are asking for the agreed safety measures that are identified, not by the FBU, by the FBU together with the NFCC and the employers to address hazards identified within that same joint risk assessment process. We, we identified the hazard, we agreed the appropriate control measures to eliminate that. They've been in place, these control measures, throughout the pandemic. They've been proven to have been effective, and we even have specific examples of where they have stopped cases of infection getting into fire and rescue services. All we are asking for is that we continue with those safe measures that are identified by a joint risk assessment process. And the NFCC and the employers agreed at the time was suitable and sufficient. And when we consider that the NFCC and employees are now working to remove those safety measures, those proven safety measures, at a time when all of the advice out there is saying we should be reassessing safety measures and maximising them. SAGE have published this in their paper about mitigating transmission in the face of this new variant, which we know to be more transmissible. So the government's own scientific advisors are saying we should be doing the opposite of what the NFCC and employers are working to do. The official Office of National Statistics has released figures last week saying that workers working in the settings that firefighters are going into are two to three times more likely to catch COVID and die of it than an average worker. PHE has released figures last week saying that outbreaks in the settings that firefighters are volunteering and working in are now on the rise. Still, we're not saying we won't go into these settings. We've been going into these settings, supporting these settings in our community since March. All we are asking for is for the basic safety measures that we agreed and have been proven to work. And just to set that straight finally, because there's been a lot of misrepresentation on this, the crux of the matter here, the main control measure that the NFCC is saying is unreasonable, we are asking that when firefighters to come back from these high risk tasks, from driving ambulances, from transferring COVID patients, from moving the bodies of the COVID deceased, we are asking for a PCR test and a negative result to ensure that they don't have COVID before they go back into the fire station. That is all, Tam, and it's been proven to work. Now, to counter what you said, the National Fire Chiefs Council and HMI say that what they are after is what they call parity which we understand they want the same arrangements for firefighters as the people they are working alongside. So, for instance, a firefighter would have the same safety arrangements as a paramedic would have if they're working with them. What's the problem with that? It's really important that we address the matter of parity and the claim from the NFCC that parity is a control measure. Let's be clear, Tam, parity is not a control measure. We have identified a hazard, as I said, a hazard agreed by the NFCC and the employers too. It is then the duty of the employer to put in a control measure to ideally eliminate that, and if not possible to eliminate it, to seriously mitigate it. By simply ripping up the control measure that we put in place to do that and pointing at an external agency saying, well, we'll now do whatever they do, we'll do parity. There is a number of issues with that. Those external agencies have set their own control measures for their own specific risks within their workplace. They did not set it for the specific hazard of transferring COVID from that activity into a fire station. That is the hazard that's been identified here. And it is on the fire and rescue service to put in place an appropriate 
control measure to eliminate that. A firefighter needs to be able to pick up that risk assessment and understand exactly what their employer is doing under their duty set out in health and safety law to address that hazard. And by outsourcing that decision to external agencies, that is not being done. We will track the decision of someone external to the fire and rescue service, whether that goes up, whether that goes down, it could be different tomorrow to what it is today. That is not a competent risk assessment and it is not a control measure to address the hazard that has been identified by transmitting a potentially deadly virus into the fire and rescue service workplace. So effectively, parity can't work because a firefighter is then moving into an entirely different workplace than perhaps a paramedic colleague they've been working alongside, yeah? Yeah, absolutely, Tam. Okay, now let's move on to a little bit more detail, Ricardo, because this keeps coming up. It's with regard to a specific safety measure, and it involves waiting for a three-day period to lapse, and then a firefighter taking a COVID test. And as long as that comes back negative, they're then safe to move into the workplace. The National Fire Chiefs Council and the HMI don't want to see that three-day period anymore. What's the problem with the three-day period, and why is the union so keen that it stays in place? The three-day wait before taking the test is being misrepresented out there a lot as three days isolation or three days off of work. The three days is simply a requirement of the test, Tam, and that's in line with all of the expert scientific advice out there. Now, we're not deciding this ourselves. The Fire Brigade Union have met with many of those leading experts to discuss this. And again, SAGE themselves have released papers on this. In day one or day two after infection, it's almost impossible for the test to pick up that infection. Three days, in fact, is the minimum amount of time you should wait before taking the PCR test and getting an accurate negative result. More ideally, it would be between five days and onwards. And um, as we've seen with a recent advice to travellers coming into the country. So we've been as reasonable as possible by pushing it as far to that end of the scale by asking for a three day wait before the test is taken. But any sooner than that would simply return a false negative. And that is in line with all of the advice out there around PCR tests. Now, in line with their previous parity argument, the NFCC are arguing that they're going to try and do that with LFT's lateral flow tests, which return results more rapidly. Um, picking up the infection will still be the same time period issues with a lateral flow test as well. Um, as we mentioned before, it might not actually be lateral flow tests. That's parity today. It might not be parity tomorrow. But since we were in discussions with the employers, around the use of LFTs, and we were open to the idea of exploring the use of LFTs. But since then, a number of concerns have been raised by leading health and scientific experts as to the accuracy and more particularly the use of lateral flow testing. Yes, there are counter arguments to that, but whether the experts are supporters of LFTs or critics of LFTs, they all seem to be aligned on one thing, and that is that you cannot use a negative LFT test to act on. You cannot trust a negative result from an LFT test. You can only trust the positive. And it is the negative that the NFCC are proposing we use to say that firefighters are safe to go back into fire and rescue services. We simply don't know if that is safe. There are many, many questions over that, and the NFCC have not answered those questions yet. Ricardo, thanks very much indeed. Now we're over to General Secretary Matt Rack. Matt, we've just heard from Ricardo in necessary detail the facts of the matter. And when you hear the facts of the matter, alongside the spin that HMI and the National Fire Chiefs Council have been setting out, it does seem absolutely extraordinary what's happening. So we've got the situation where the Fire Brigade Union, alongside others, have put in place these agreements. They allow firefighters to undertake additional work to support communities in regard to COVID activities, whilst at the same time keeping them safe. And indeed, I think the fire service is one of the best safety records in regard to COVID infections in any other industry. So they clearly work. So the big question now is, why on earth do you think HMI and the National Fire Chiefs Council seem so determined and tearing them up? Well, Townsend, that goes to the heart of the question. I think what is very clear is that HMI and the National Fire Chiefs Council and probably the Home Office are all working very, very closely together. I think the HMI are exposing their lack of independence by what they're doing because they are treading into technical and political matters. I heard one of them, Zoe Billingham, on the radio the other day, clearly talking about the detail of risk assessments 
for which I believe she has no appropriate qualifications, nor even the remit to address. She's treading into political issues. And the truth is that the, the report that we saw from HMI published, the findings of that, the recommendations were written a year ago. They're exactly the same recommendations that are in the previous HMI report. They are now using, using COVID as the battering ram to uh, hit this union and its members with in order to undermine collective bargaining. I, that's the way in which we try and represent our members on pay and conditions and hours and duty systems. They want to undermine that. Uh, the National Fire Chiefs Council want more power for chief officers. And the whole thrust of this, they talk about what they call operational independence of chief officers. What they really mean is giving political power. This isn't about how you manage fire incidents or other emergencies. This is about giving political power to chief fire officers. That's the agenda that we're now facing. OK, Matt, and then just to finish off, now the employers appear to have scrapped these agreements. So just to be clear, what is the union's position at the moment in regard to these agreements? Do we want to see them back? And if so, how? Yeah, we do want to see these agreements back. We met the employers uh, earlier this week on, on Monday and we wrote to them. Uh, they're in a bizarre position, the employers, because if people read their latest circular, the question, the frequently asked questions that they publish, they say, why, why won't you carry on talking? And the employers reply to themselves, yes, of course we'll carry on talking. We've written to the employers asking for talks. They've told us that they now have to consult with all the other employers to see whether they can talk to us. Well, why claim that they want to talk, but then delay, I, I believe for about two weeks or more before they even respond as to whether they can talk. That's just delaying because it strikes me they don't want to discuss a resolution to this problem. And just to be clear, the union's ready, willing and able to discuss this matter at any time. We, we met them all over Christmas and the New Year. We'll meet them, uh, it's Friday today, we'll meet them Saturday, Sunday, uh, any day of the week, evenings, early mornings, whatever, we will meet to try and resolve this. The people who are avoiding meeting are the fire service employers and in the background, I think, pulling the strings, unfortunately, are the uh, National Fire Chiefs Council, the Home Office and the Fire Service Inspectorate working together. Matt, thanks very much indeed, a very clear message. <laughs>